السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام How are you, Manaim? Alhamdulillah, how are you? We miss you. That's why we're back. Yeah, I miss you too. Alhamdulillah. وعليكم شيخ عاصم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمه وبركاته وزيرتي جود جود الحمد لله ندوي ان شاء الله We'll start in 10 minutes, inshallah.
How do you like the details of the program, Dr. Sal? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Thank God. We need you 30 minutes at least. <laughs> okay, inshallah, I am ready. Inshallah. 30 minutes, you got it. Inshallah. Inshallah, Rabbil Alameen.
All right. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brothers and sisters, I pray that you all are doing well, inshallah. And I hope that you had a wonderful day. And assalamu alaikum, Dr. Saleh. It's good to see you again. Alhamdulillah. I feel like we are back in Ramadan. We're back in Ramadan. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight, Dr. Saleh. I was, all, I was all alone yesterday. And oh, I was, I'm sorry to hear that. I was mentioning your name. I miss Dr. Saleh. I don't know if you heard me. <laughs> uh, my ears were ringing. Uh, oh, good. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So tonight, inshallah, um, as you see on the screen, we call uh, our program uh, Spiritual Fireside Chat, inshallah. This will be every Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m. Uh, today or tonight, we are going to start with the recitation of the Quran, inshallah. Uh, I will be reciting from Surah Al-Furqan, chapter 25, and the verses are from 61 all the way until the end of the chapter 77. And it'll be about 10 minutes recitation. And then after my recitation, Dr. Saleh will share his reflections over the recited verses, inshallah, for about 30, 35 minutes until uh, Salat al-Aisha. Salat al-Aisha is gonna be around 9.15. So I will call the event at 9.15 and then we'll pray Salat al-Aisha. As usual, after the prayer, we'll recite collectively Ayat al-Kursi and do our tasabih and then finish with the dua. So that will be our program for today. So I will start with the recitation of the Quran and I'm going to put the verses on the screen so you can follow uh, the meaning of the verses, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي جعل في السماء بروجا وجعل فيها سراجا وقمرا منيرا وهو الذي جعل الليل والنهار خلفة لمن أراد أن يذكر أو أراد شكورا وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هو وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سنة والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما 
وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك يلقى أثاما يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانا إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَنْ تَابَ والذين لا يشهدون الزور وإذا مروا وإذا مروا باللغو مروا كراما والذين إذا ذكروا بآيات ربهم لم يخروا لم يخروا عليها صما وعميانا والذين يقولون رب ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين تنقين إماما أولئك يرزون الغرفة بما صبروا ويلقون فيها تحية وسلاما 
خالدين فيها حسنت مستقرا ومقاما قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاؤكم فقد كذبتم فسوف يكون لزاما صدق الله العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب بالعالمين الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد آمين يا رب العالمين May Allah bless you brother Asim for this nice recitation and nice voice الحمد لله <coughs> Would you like to have the uh, the screen or share the screen with us so I, I don't have to read from the Quran? The text. Sure. I'll do that, inshallah. Let me close my video and then I'll put it on it, inshallah. Okay. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من لدنك علما يا أرحم الراحمين والله we ask you to increase our knowledge make us benefit from it and endow us with the knowledge that would benefit others. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ajma'in. My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I feel like we are in Ramadan already. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, your time with us. Uh, we're talking about Surah Al-Furqan. Surah Al-Furqan is distinguished and very special because it was revealed in the early Meccan stage or a period where the emphasis was on building the Muslim identity, so to speak, building the core of the belief for the new Muslims. So the, uh, the, the, uh, the emphasis of this surah is about developing the contrast between contrast between the light and darkness as a symbol of like ignorance versus knowledge, righteousness versus sin, uh, spiritual uh, progress uh, versus degradation, because the community over there and the society was in the ignorance stage. So the Prophet ﷺ wanted to lift these new Muslims from darkness into light and to establish the, the uh, Muslim identity and the uh, blueprint, so to speak, for the, uh, how to be a Muslim. And this goes until our days and in the day of judgment to establish this identity for us. What should we do and should not do? So, the uh, starting of the ayahs, uh, uh, starting number 61, you are, are watching the, uh, the translation. Uh, I'm not going to have to waste the time uh, uh, in reading it again. Allah says, 
the, 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 he created the heavens and the earth to establish this knowledge in the early Meccan period. The glorious lamp of, of the skies is the sun and next to it is the moon that will take, uh, uh, borrows the light from it. So it's a, 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 the universe and how large and huge the universe is and what is, what's included in it, that it's all from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so the, the, the signs of the zodiac that marks the path of the planets, establishing this idea and this knowledge in the new Muslim life era in the desert where they have no knowledge of anything except for the ignorance period. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishing them step by step. And that's how the uh, re revelation of the Quran became uh, uh, in, in stages over 23 years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, وَلَقَدْ جَعَلْنَا فِي السَّمَاءِ بُرُوجًا وَزَيَّنَّهَا لِلنَّاظِرِينَ That's also an emphasis of the creation of, of the heavens and the skies, that we have set out zodiac signs in the heavens and make them fair seeming to all. Uh, so the, the, the marvelous orders of the creation of the heavens manifested in these ayahs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said again in Surah Al-Rahman, to teach those Bedouins, those who don't know anything about religion yet, to teach them who is Allah. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of the Lords. He is the creator of all that we can see. So to establish this part is very important and essential. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah, in Ayah number 62, وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرَ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُورًا Now, the days and nights are succession, in succession, and the, uh, the scenes of the uh, uh, phenomenal world are signs of those who will self-reflect and uh, uh, or to say thanks and gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because without the night there will be no day. Without the day there will be no, no night. So uh, it's to establish our lifestyle that we work at the daytime and then we come home and we take off our clothes and we eat and then finally we go to sleep. Relax and say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen for making this night and for us to be safe and sound and to sleep and then to renew our life next day and so on and so forth. Now he is moving from the creation of the universe into the creation of the personality of the Muslim. Who is the Muslim? Now there are criteria, and this, as I said, is a blueprint on how we become Muslims, how we become good human beings, benefiting others and benefit ourselves. And this is for everybody. This is for everyone. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, especially for those who are called Ibadur Rahman, means the servants of the merciful. So he used a Rahman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the character or the, the attribute. A Rahman is the merciful, the most merciful. We are the servants of the most merciful to establish the mercy in our life, to establish mercy in our approach to others and how we approach the uh, dealing with others within our family, within our work environment, within the, the, the planet itself, within the, the, the creatures, animals, uh, the, the plants, everything is out of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So number one, means number one is that the humility. A humility is a trademark of a Muslim. Arrogance is not part of our personality as Muslims. So when you see someone who's acting arrogantly, 
rest assured that he or she did not embrace the meaning of what Islam is all about, what is our aqidah is all about. Two things, humility towards those who are in search of knowledge, meaning to give their knowledge and to teach others with humility and humbleness. You don't say that I really have so many degrees, I am very knowledgeable. Once you reach that, we reach that point, we say I'm very knowledgeable. This is the deterioration of our personality as scientists, as scientists or, uh, or engineers or doctors or lawyers or there is always above every knowledgeable person there is one who is more knowledgeable so we have to attain that humbleness and humility towards others number one number two to those who merely dispute somebody you know you are in an argument and uh, there is a dispute so they don't speak harshly. Those Muslim people or the people, the servants of the merciful, they don't speak harshly, but they say peace. You know what, just, I like to say peace, goodbye, I'm leaving you. That means when, when there is an argument with someone who is uh, ignorant, for example, or acting arrogantly, they don't engage in this kind of argument because they know their level of knowledge and they say, you know what, just, you know, I refrain from answering and thank you, may Allah bless you and give you the knowledge, you already have it probably. So this is a, a character, number one is humbleness, humility and uh, uh, benefiting others from the knowledge that we know. That's why I always make sure to start my talk with Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna min ladunka ilman ya rabbal alameen so we can serve our community serve those who are less fortunate in the field of knowledge you can take any field physics, chemical, chemistry, uh, mathematics, uh, science, anything so when you are gifted you give that knowledge with humbleness Okay, this is the trademark. Number two. So now you are on a great level of knowledge and humbleness. Now it is your turn with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our ibadah. It's not only the five times a day. It is those, the mark or the trademark of those who are ibadur rahman is to spend part of their night not sleeping. Of course, we have to sleep, our body needs rest. But at the same time, we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best time is before Fajr or the, the, the last third of the night where everybody's asleep and then we wake up just to make few rak'ahs, two, four, six, whatever that we can to humble ourselves and to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as-salatu wa nasu niyam that's the best worship is you pray when everybody is asleep and in surah al-sajda Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described these people these humble people by saying tatajafa junubuhum anil madaji'i yad'una rabbahum khawfan wa tama'a in Surah Al-Sajda, their limbs or their bodies forsakes, uh, uh, forsake the, 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 uh, the bed and forsake uh, uh, sleep to go and get up and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in humbleness and humility and praying to Allah in fear and hope, fear of being transgressing against their own selves and hope with a reward in Jannah, insha'Allah ta'ala. So this is the second two, the second quality of the servants of uh, uh, the, uh, the righteous people, 
الذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم ان عذابها كان غراما انها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما this is all three connecting to the character of عباد الرحمن that under hope to avoid جهنم والعياذ بالله and to be admitted in paradise and to be honest with you our hope in this life is not to attain the highest degrees or how many degrees that I can get or how many cars or anything from this positions of this dunya. Our focus should be the day after. Where am I going to be? Am I going to be in Jannah or not? That's the focus. And that's the quality of Ibad rahman We have to care about this now, this life. The Prophet says that act as though you are living forever. And again, act as though you are dying tomorrow. So there should be a balance. وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا Okay. Now number three. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهَ الْآخَرِ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَقَعَ ثَمَا لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر لا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله and لا يزنون so three so we have two first now three meaning do not ascribe any entity with Allah سبحانه وتعالى this is a given إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء Allah سبحانه وتعالى will never forgive anyone who ascribes another entity to be worshipped by next to Allah. Under that, Allah will forgive everything. Anything, if you ask sincerely from the heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill. And in the day, uh, 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 there is a hadith I would like to share with you. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. عن أبي بكر رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا أنبئكم بأكبر الكبائر فقالوا بلى يا رسول الله قلنا بلى يا رسول قال الإشراك بالله وعقوق الوالدين وكان متكئا فجلس وقال ألا وقول الزور ألا وقول الزور ألا وقول الزور فما زال لا يكررها حتى قلنا ليته سكت رواه البخاري that the messenger of Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, the messenger of Allah told us, shall I not inform you of one of the gravest of the cardinal sins? And we said, yes, Rasulullah, O messenger of Allah. And he said to join others as partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship and to be undutiful to one's parents. And then the messenger was in reclining position, he stood straight and added, I warn you making a false statement, giving a false testimony. I warn you against making false statement, giving false testimony. And the messenger, messenger of Allah kept repeating it until we said, we wish that he would stop. Meaning that do not ascribe any entity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the major sin. Number two, number two from this categories, these categories is وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And then meaning that you do not kill. It's a given. You know, whoever kills one person as though he kills all humanity and whoever revives one soul or one person as though he revives the whole humanity. So this is a given. It is part of our Sharia. Number one, we do not kill. We preserve life. This is who we are as Muslims. And do not commit fornication. Okay. Meaning, do not commit adultery because it is harmful to one's self, 
to the community, to the society, and to own family. It is a no-no. Uh, well, I, I don't want to, to say any more about this because it is obvious that we do not uh, uh, engage in these things. Uh, a, a crime against ourselves and our own respect, our community, our society and our family. And all the problems happen with having relationships out of marriage. This is a haram, this is unlawful, and the crime will be punished. So if we do any of these three, we are committing transgression against Allah, against our own selves, against society and the creation. So this deals with these three. Number 69, those who do this, يضعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانة that the punishment will be doubled for him or her in the day of resur resurrection and he or she will dwell there in humiliation forever. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم those three crimes are infamous, so very grievous, grievous punishment for them. Now, there comes the answer for them. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَأُولَئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا What did we say before? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give no forgiveness for ascribing entity with him, but he forgives everything else to whom he wills, to whom he wanted. So, as we say, the, the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Islamu yajubbu ma qablahu, means if someone was not Muslim and committed a lot of sins in his or her life, and they became a Muslim and they witnessed and they declared the shahada, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but God and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his messenger. Everything is wiped. We open a new page in our life. So that's why we have to renew our faith every night, every day, every second. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Sayyidina Muhammad an abduhu wa rasuluh. This is the benefit that we reap. So anybody who does those things before, when they repent sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repent, believe, do righteous deeds. وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُهَا Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in that hadith that you have to follow every mistake or the mistake by doing a good deed. And that good deed will wipe all the bad deeds before it. إِلَّا مِنْ تَابَ فَأُولَئِكَ وَاتْ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيْهِ Allah will exchange these sins into good deeds, subhanAllah. It's not only to be wiped, but on the contrary. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He's merciful. If we go to the beginning, we say, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ Why did He connected servants with the most merciful? Because all the acts here need mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to be asking for his mercy. And this is the answer to that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us. The ultimate mercy is by wiping our bad deeds and sins and replacing it with good deeds, inshallah. So let's get that in our minds that we always need to ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the Prophet وسلم, he said that I would make an istighfar for every day about 70 times. 70 times is not like exactly 70. It might be 170, it might be 200, but always on a state of asking for forgiveness. And that's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How about us? So let us put in, the, in our mind that glorifying Allah and asking forgiveness. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ 
So two states in our existence as Muslim that وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never torture these people while you are amongst them. You are being with them. And then the second part, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرُمْ That Allah will never punish them while they are in a state of istighfar. So that's the opportunity for us, insha'Allah. Now, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامَ There is two categories here. Now, that they witness no falsehood and do not give uh, uh, evidence that is false. Now, that's number one. Remember the hadith I mentioned before, قول الزور, when the Prophet وسلم, sat straight and he said, those who say the falsehood or witness falsehood or say false evidence. That is from the biggest of sins, the grievous sins, beside ascribing some ent another entity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to being bad for your parents. That's the third category. So we do not witness or no falsehood, meaning when, when you when they were asked to give an opinion or a state of fact, we as Muslims have to know. We don't have to lie. Either we say, I don't know, I haven't seen, or we say the truth. But falsifying truth, this is under this category. So number two, do not assist in anything which implies fraud or falsehood. It's self-explanatory. And we have plenty of evidence on people who falsify facts, whether it was credit card fraud or other fraudulent acts. May Allah forgive our sins. May Allah protect us from being in that category. So, وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا Meaning, uh, futilities, vain talk, uh, undefying jokes that people do most of the time. You know, on social media, we sometimes read many jokes that pertaining to some categories. I don't want to mention that, but sometimes they think they are making fun of, uh, let's say, a, a person or fun of a situation that sometimes it's just not really tasteful. But you're wasting your time in putting that garbage in our mind. So when you read something like that, just delete it. You don't have to participate in spreading it, to be honest with you. That's when it says, it doesn't have to be like you pass by a group of people who are sitting and joking and making fun of others. It means in our day and time that social media, I mean, this is the biggest group of falsifying the truth, saying jokes and making fun of others or vain talk that wastes your time, our precious time. We are, we have no time to be wasted, to be honest with you, my dear brothers and sisters. We either have to be asking for knowledge, seeking knowledge, teaching, or working hard for making ourselves a better, peop better people. About the munafiqi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tawbah, وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنَّ إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُوضُ وَنَلْعَبْ قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ Prophet ﷺ, if you do ask them, Allah is telling him, if you do ask them, they say, oh, we are only joking, we are only kidding, and we are playing. Say, O oh, Muhammad ﷺ, was it at Allah and his signs and his messenger that you were mocking? Is this 
joking. So that means it's not easy, my brothers and sisters, to make jokes. If it's uh, uh, silly or harming other people on the expense of joking or laughing at them, that's not good. That's not what the categories of Ibad al-Rahman. So we have to work so hard on ourselves, uh, me included. Everybody makes mistakes. But to acknowledge that and to stop doing it, stop spreading those uh, uh, rumors or jokes. And, and the, the, the hadith, it's a long hadith. ibn Jabal anhu قال, I asked the Prophet وسلم, O Prophet of Allah, tell me about a deed or something that I do will cause me to enter paradise. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have asked about a great matter, O Mu'adh, yet it is easy for him, for whom Allah makes it easy. Worship Allah without associating any entity with him, number one. And then number two, establish the prayer to pray. Pay zakat, fast in Ramadan, and make the pilgrimage. So those are the five pillars of Islam. If you do them, you enter Jannah. And he said, then he said, shall I not guide you towards a means of goodness? Fasting is a shield. Charity wipes away sins as water extinguishes fire. And the praying of a man in depth of the night, then he peace be uh, and blessings of Allah be upon him, recited, those who forsake their beds and invoke their Lord, and invoke their Lord in fear and hope. The ayah which I recited from Surah Al-Sajda to the end of it. Then peace be upon him, he said, shall I not inform you of the head of the matter, it's a pillar, it's pillar and the peak. And he said, oh, messenger of Allah, yes. And he said, the prophet said, the head of the matter is Islam. Meaning, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's the head of our belief and aqidah. And then, uh, 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 and then, uh, uh, then he, peace be upon him, said, shall I not tell you of the foundation of the, of the faith? He said, yes. And he said, took hold of this, his tongue, took a hold of the tongue. And he said, protect, protect this, protect this. And Mu'az ibn al said, are we accounted for what we say, O, o Prophet of Allah? He said, may your mother be bereaved of you. Oh, Mu'ad, is there anything that throws people in the hellfire upon their faces or on their noses except the harvest of their tongues? Now, this is very scary. Sometimes you, we say words that we mean nothing by it. Oh, it's just a joke. Always oh, saying this. But in actuality, it will be leading us into the hellfire. So we have to really be careful of what we say. Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said, I wish I had a neck as long as the camel's neck. So before I say anything, I would filter it and stop saying. If you don't have anything to say, don't say it. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmi al-akhir falyaqul khayran aw liyasmu. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever believes in the day after, the day of judgment, and in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to say good things. Otherwise, be silent. Because the words that you say will never come back. You might hurt somebody. You might say things that you mean joking, but it has connotation in it. And that will come back to haunt you in the day of judgment. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us from those words that we might say 
jokingly, knowingly, or unknowingly. والذين إذا ذكروا بآيات ربهم لم يخروا عليها صما وعميانا. This is self-explanatory. Uh, how are we on time, my dear brother? Well, it is uh, 9.15, but if you want to take your so, time, that's fine. I, I, okay, I prepared for half hour, but it seems like it's going to take more than that. MashaAllah, you have a lot to say. <laughs> Continue. I think well, we are alhamdulillah. Doing... والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين. So the first one before that is those who are reminded by the signs of their Lord, they did not just understand or went by it without thinking about it. No, they think, they act upon it. They do not fall deaf. or blind on those signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, O oh Allah, our Lord grant us delight in our spouses and our children and grandchildren and make us good example for the righteous. Now, this is Dua Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Uh, uh, so we are always you know, asking uh, for good deeds and for straight path for our children and grandchildren. These are our responsibilities. So we guide them. At the same time, we make dua for them. That's why it comes when we do our tahajjud. The closest we are is when we are in a state of sujood or prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We constantly, constantly pray for them because We do our best and the rest for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is where we really need to concentrate. All these categories, the reward is That's it. So if you if you attain all these qualities, I tell you. you will be among the righteous people and the prophets. Because we, as people, we make mistakes and we sin. And that's the quality of a human being, the character that we are sinners. But at the same time, the best among us are those who repent and ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will be in abode, a great abode forever and ever. كل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاءكم. So what what are you to my Lord without your prayers? You have denied the truth, and the inevitable will happen. So if we deny the truth, we know where we we do we will go. But that's why الدعاء مخ العبادة. The Prophet ﷺ said, supplication and prayer is the essence. of worship, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we have to continually, continuously making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, a summary of what I said is this. Number one, they are humble and forbearing to those below them in spiritual worth. Number two, they are constantly by adoration in touch with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, they always remember the judgment day and the hereafter. Number four, they are moderate in all things. And they avoid treason to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by committing sins, adultery, ascribing other entities with him, almighty, to their fellow creatures. and to themselves, three entities, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our own selves, and others, neighbors, co-workers, family members. So we have to recalculate and re-establish our position in this life. They give wide birth to not only falsehood, but futility. We do not witness any bad or falsehood, and they pay attention both in mind and manner to the signs of our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
you have to sit sometimes and think about what Allah has created for us and say thanks to him. Everything from the day time we wake up until the time we go to sleep, there are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our existence. You know, we have to thank him for it. We have to thank him and be grateful to what have given us. Number eight, their ambition is to bring up their families in righteousness and to lead in all goods. And this is the code of being Ibadul Rahman. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are described in this surah, Surah Al-Furqan, surah number 25. O oh Allah, make us among those who worship you and who declare your oneness and who will do no fraudulent acts, will do more charity and will be grateful to you, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, make us among those who will be happy in the day of judgment with our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with all the Prophets and the martyrs and the righteous people in Jannah. And ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to guide us all to the right path and the straight path. May Allah accept. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Assalamu. pray for me. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Saleh, thank you so much for these beautiful words of wisdom. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala guide us to these beautiful principles, inshallah. Amen. It is always, always wonderful to hear you. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khair. Always to hear you too. It's wonderful to hear you, Brother Ask. <laughs> Inshallah. Thank you. We're going to pray Salat al Ashana, Inshallah. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على البلاء حي على البلاء
الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير والذي خلقكم فمنكم كافر ومنكم مؤمن والله بما تعملون بصير خلق السماوات والأرض بالحق وصوركم فأحسن صوركم وإليه المصير يعلم ما في السماوات والأرض ويعلم ما تسرون وما تعلنون والله عليم بذات الصدور ألم يأتكم نبأ الذين كفروا من قبل فذاقوا وبال أمرهم ولهم عذاب أليم ذلك بأنه كانت تأتيهم رسل بالبينات فقالوا فقالوا أبشر يهدوننا فكفروا وتولوا واستغنى الله والله غني حميد زعم الذين كفروا أن لن يبعثوا قل بلى وربي لتبعثن ثم لتنبأن بما عملتم وذلك على الله يسير فآمنوا بالله ورسوله والنور الذي أنزلنا والله بما تعملون خبير الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا 
يوم يجمعكم يوم الجمع ذلك يوم التغاب ومن يؤمن بالله ويعمل صالحا يكفر عنه سيئاته ويدخل جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار غالبين فيها أبدا ذلك الفوز العظيم والذين كفروا وكذبوا بآياتنا أولئك أصحاب النار أولئك أصحاب النار خالدين فيها وبئس المصير ما أصاب من مصيبة إلا بإذن الله ومن يؤمن بالله يهدي قلبه والله بكل شيء عليم وأطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول فإن توليتم فإنما على رسولنا البلاء المبين الله لا إله إلا هو وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين إليك نعبد وإليك نستغفر الله أكبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين مالك يوم الدين إياك الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو اللهم أنت السلام منك السلام أبارك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام 
سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا اله الا الله والله اكبر ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم please recite with me ayat al kursi insha Allah الله لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم لا تاخذه سنه ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الارض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده الا باذنه يعلم ما بين ايديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه الا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والارض ولا يؤوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم سبحان الله 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 الحمد لله 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 الله اكبر 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 لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم احشرنا في زمره الصالحين Amin. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbana la tuakhidna inna sina au akhtakna. ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا اللهم من أحييته منا فأحيه على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت 
ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين صدق الله العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us. Before I leave, I just wanted to remind you uh, the upcoming program, inshallah. Uh, as you know, we have two special programs for you. One is uh, weeknight spiritual reset, Mondays and Thursdays um, at 9, 9 p.m. And we just had another one uh, with Dr. Saleh, um, spiritual fireside chat. So that is that was at 8:30 uh, p.m. So uh, Thursday, the day after tomorrow, inshallah, I would love to see all of you again at 9 p.m. As you see on the screen, we're going to start at 9 p.m. with the recitation of this time, Surah Al-Waqi'ah. We did Surah Al-Rahman last time, inshallah. You will see the meaning of the verses on the screen, and then uh, this time I will share with you the introduction to the Quran, inshallah. Uh, I call this one two. I did introduction to the Quran one uh, last Tuesday. If you miss it, if you like to listen, please, uh, you can go to our Facebook and then listen, inshallah. That would be wonderful. This will be the continuation of the, the first uh, segment. So, uh, and then after the talk, uh, we'll do the same way. And then an Asha prayer and collective ayat al-kursi tasabih and dua and that will be our program inshallah and before i leave as i promise i just would like to see if there is any question uh, i'm really sorry last time some of you were desperately asking questions i thought all of you are on zoom and i realized that those questions were coming from facebook because i wasn't uh, seeing the facebook i was just checking the chat box on our zoom uh, uh, converse, uh, connection. So I missed some of your questions uh, on the Facebook. I'm really sorry. We are, you know, using mostly Zoom plus Facebook, of course. If you have any questions, if you can join Zoom, that would be wonderful. I would try to see also Facebook, but it's kind of like difficult to um, move from one side to another side. So there are a lot of things that are going on on the screen. I'm looking at uh, your questions if for the, your comments, if there's any. Um, okay, so I don't see any questions. Thank you so much. Uh, inshallah, we'll see you on uh, Thursday at 9 p.m. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Have a great night. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>